Greetings, <clears throat> unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the media speaks. <clears throat> it is time for the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Ah, uh, so I mean, summer's over. Football season's coming. There'll be all kinds of dummies coming up then. All right, guys. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner this month is actually rather depressing, I'm going to be honest. I didn't want to do it because I don't want to make light of what happened. However, I could not find anything dumber. And I could not justify giving the Dunce Cap of the Month Award to anybody other than the pumpkin head that won it this month. So we're going to do most of our laughing early on in the set. Be warned, you're going to be very angry when you see who has won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. But we're going to go ahead and launch right into this. The ones that almost won, the runner-ups. WISN.com. Agent, armed agents, mind you, raid animal shelter for baby deer. The very first Dunce Cap Award, I think, went to the DNR in uh, Illinois or Indiana, I forget. Um, and they, they recanted uh, from their evil ways, so the show has made them, uh, you know, I, I've left them alone. I haven't harassed them. What is, what is the crime here of rampant deer owning? Armed guards, um... Kenosha, Wisconsin. They have almost won the Dunce Cap of the Month award for this. WISN 12 News investigates an operation raising questions about the use of government resources and the state policy that meant a death sentence for a fawn. A deadly fawn. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Scholes was working in the barn at the Society of St. Francis at the Kenosha, Illinois border when a swarm of squad cars arrived and officers unloaded with a search warrant. There were nine DNR officers, there's your tax dollars hard at work, and four deputy sheriffs, and they were all armed to the teeth, Schultz said. The focus of their search was a baby fawn, thought to be there by Illinois' family, worried that they had been abandoned by its mother. When it made a little noise, it sounded like it was laughing, Schultz said. Let me, let me call this up here. You guys are not going to believe it. This, that's the threat. There it is. Look at the terror. What a bunch of bastards. Um, the warden drafted an affidavit for a search warrant complete with aerial photos, uh, tax dollars, hard at work. Got any hungry people there in Wisconsin? No, no, no. Even everything's fine there. You can spend your tax dollars on this. In which he described getting himself into a position where he was able to see the fawn going in and out of the barn. This swine warden needs to be like run out of the country. I've never seen such stupidity. I'm going to go on a little bit. Uh, agents told staff that they came to seize the deer because Wisconsin law forbids the possession of wildlife. Who is the Wisconsin law to be God to begin with? Second of all, the dangerous deer. I know it could get out and a car could hit it. We need armed guards? I said the deer is scheduled to go to the wildlife reserve the next day, so they were not keeping it, they were taking it to a reserve. They were not keeping it, it was not going to be getting out and getting into traffic. It was to go to a wildlife reserve in Illinois that allows the rehabilitation of deer. Schultz said agents corralled workers near the picnic area and then sent out a search for the fawn. I was thinking in my mind that they were going to take the deer to the wildlife shelter, and then they came back carrying the baby deer over their shoulder. She was in a body bag, Schultz said. I said, why did you do that? He said, that's our policy. And I said, that's one hell of a policy. So you sent armed guards to a, a, a fawn <laughs> using aerial photos to prove the existence of said kept fawn, which is so vehemently against uh, the, the, the visceral madness that is in Wisconsin. I don't care where they found, I don't care where they would have killed her, I it would have been wrong. Uh, they, they, they're describing where they killed her, they should have killed it on the property. No, they shouldn't have killed it at all. And that is why the DNR of Wisconsin almost got the dunce cap of the month award. So did this from myfoxdetroit.com. Billboards with wrong general election date to be corrected. <laughs> 
first of all, you've got the Democrats that think that minorities are too stupid to know how to get a license, which I do not believe at all. Second of all, it says, your voice is your voice. General election, September 2nd. Billboards reminding Detroiters that their vote is, their voices are heard all over the city. They also mistakenly say the general election is September 2nd. Apparently, the Detroit City Clerk's Office wanted the billboards updated on September 2nd with the date of the general election. Clearly, the person responsible for the work got a little confused. No one caught the mistake until Clerk Janice Winfrey spotted the botched billboards and called the president of International Outdoor on Saturday, the same day the billboards were updated. Why did they not get the Dunn's Cap of the Month award? The executive told us that it was an honest mistake in his company's first 12 years of doing business with them. The president of International Outdoor said that all of the billboards will be corrected Tuesday. The work will not cost the city a dime, and the company is even throwing in a few additional billboards for the city's trouble. The general election is November 5th. You know what? I remember my friend Terry Winters. I wrote Metallica on his uh, back uh, coat once instead of Metallica with two L's. I scrub it off with water, and I think I finally fixed it. The point is, they made it right. I've been there. It's not the dunce cap of the month, especially because they fessed up. So then we moved on to... HawaiiNewsNow.com, you think, okay, can't get any dumber. Man accused of threatening Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard arrested in Mexico. Now, I got a song for him here. This, this is the, uh, the Dumb Son song. The son, a dummy for a son. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely dummy for a son. Listen to this. So come, someone, and take away my son. Honolulu, a former Hawaii resident, is under arrest in San Diego. Worse, I the Accused of threatening to kill Congressman Tulsi Gabbard. Anna Ruda Sherbao was arrested in Tijuana, Mexico Wednesday and brought to San Diego. The 43-year-old wrote a letter to the FBI and also included the media. The text is vulgar and racist at times. This has to be what this, that this man's father must think. I bet you this man's father just walks around singing this song for him all the time. Uh, we'll, we'll go through it one more time as we go. It's, it's, it can't be over. It can't be over mentioned here. He ends the letter by writing, I, Ananuda Servro, with the divine of my, as my witness, do hereby solemnly vow to find Tulsi Gabbard wheresoever she may be, and to sever her head from her body. He threatened to, dis to cut her head off, decapitate He then says, I suppose the FBI will file charges against me. It did, the FBI that is, and Sherbro will appear in court in San Diego Friday and will eventually have to appear in Washington, D.C. He will not return to Hawaii for any court proceedings. That is dumb on so many levels. So his great plan there was to, to simply go ahead and threaten the congresswoman and then blatantly ask the FBI if they were going to, uh, to get him. Not that I'm saying you should threaten a congresswoman and then hide. It's just that the layers of stupidity go so high that he, he came within a hair's breadth of winning the Dunn's Cap of the Month Award. He really did. Uh, I got a message here. I'm going to hop to it real quick from listeners. Um, Yep, a uh, uh, MacBook with a 2 gig of RAM won't be able to watch the show. That's not good. Well, don't buy one of those if you're a fan of the correct use. But they're easily upgraded, and it looks like uh, Mac may be the direction the show goes in. As sacrilegious as I used to think that that was. Guys, the hell.com McCain, John McCain, and no surprise here, he has almost won the Dust Cap of the Month award. He is the last of the runners up. McCain, voting between Rand Paul and Hillary Clinton would be tough. I'm going to interject some thoughts here just as I read, as they come to mind. Senator John McCain, Arizona, joked that it would be a tough decision 
to vote for Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky over Democrat Hillary Clinton in both if both won their party's presidential nomination in 16. Voting between Adolf Hitler and the Pope. Okay, I, uh, it's going to be a tough choice, McCain said with a laugh when asked about it in the interview of the New Republic published Tuesday. Mother Teresa or Joseph Stalin? McCain clarified that he believes that Paul is trying to expand the GOP brand and that he represents the same libertarian-leaning part of the party once represented by his father, former Republican Ron Paul. However, McCain, he preys on another perspective, a Republican candidate, or Rubio, anything to get, to, to get them out of the way. But it would be difficult to choose between Rand Paul and Hillary Clinton. One wants to control every aspect of your life. One is crippling to the coal industry. One is crippling to energy. One is a warmonger. One likes to get us involved in every foreign entanglement known to man and kill hundreds of, not hundreds of thousands of Americans and soldiers and civilians in other countries. And you've got Rand Paul, a man of peace, a man who will not attack unless we are attacked and then he will quickly obliterate the enemy. He does not believe in nation building nor policing the world. He does not wish to sign us up for Agenda 21, and he wishes to rid our prison of many nonviolent offenders. So let me ask you something, John McCain. How is it difficult to choose? But no, no, that didn't get the Dunn's Cap of the Month award. I lied, there is one more runner-up. It does have to do with marijuana, that's why I confused it. A blog.cron.com. Records show that a vet denied his right to buy a gun over a 1971 pot charge, of which he was never convicted. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, basically, uh, Mr. Uh, retired U.S. Army SFC Ronald Kelly, who was 59, served in the military for 20 years. He couldn't purchase a gun because of a minor drug possession when he was 17 years old. He was never convicted in the case. He is pictured on July 9, 2013. I mean, the picture's up here. I should have put it up there, but didn't. All right, guys, look. He didn't even remember that he didn't just plead out of the case. Point is, going back to the nonviolent thing here, a man who was in charge of many, many weapons, and it mentions, go read the articles. Uh, in the, read the article, I should say. It talks about all of his weapon, uh, weapons experience. He was not able to buy a 22 caliber rifle at the local Walmart because of a drug possession in 1970. Yep, so uh, needless to say, there was almost a dunce cap sent there, but no, no. The dunce cap of the month award, brought to you by Bud K, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K, you'll find many survivor th survival items, designers, swords, most, some of the most awesome, unusual things you'll ever find, go to Bud K. Now, unfortunately... This involves something that's not funny at all. This involves government overstepping their bounds. And this involves the death of a little girl that happened because of it. And I'm going to call this little girl up. Her name is Alexandria. And we're going to cut the comedy here on the Delta Cap of the Month Award. And we're going to actually be serious for a moment. Nothing was stupider than this. I'm sorry. Nothing was dumber. Child killed because parents smoked pot handed over to convicted pot dealer. August 7th, 2013, InfoWars. The investigation into the tragic case of two-year-old Alexandra Hill, the toddler that recently died while in foster care, was taken to a pro has taken a provocative turn which lays additional blame for her death at the feet of the Texas Mentor Program and, child, and Texas Child Protective Services. Who is getting the dunce cap of the freaking month award? The CPS caseworker originally determined Alexandria needed to be removed from her parents' custody due to her mother's medical condition and their, quote, actively engaging in illegal drug use around their child. The illegal drug in question was marijuana. 
Mr. Hill admitted to smoking marijuana in the house when his daughter had been upstairs sleeping. The caseworker representing the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services noted in court records obtained by InfoWars. Well, um, Mrs. Representative, maybe you should know that, uh, look up the Hitler Youth. It was very common, and it's, it's been happening, I mean, not just Hitler, I mean, you don't have to use the Nazis, it's happened in Rome, it's happened anywhere. The government starts taking children for every little thing, and then comes the indoctrination and the environment that the government wants. Now, we might be doing it somewhat differently in this country, but it's still leading to children being taken away from parents who are wonderful parents, who are doing nothing wrong whatsoever, except getting their rights infringed upon by the government who has no right to dictate how they live if they are not abusing or hurting their child, and it led to the death of this beautiful person. In an ironic twist, an investigation into Alexandria's foster parents by KVUE News found that the foster father with whom Alexandria was placed in late 2012 not only likely used marijuana, but was also convicted of selling it twice. Clement Small is not charged in the death of the two-year-old Alexandria Hill, but he has a criminal history that includes multiple marijuana charges and suspended driver's license. A report from KRXT states, I'm going to go on because this is why it won. According to KVUE, Clement was convicted in 1989 and again in 1990 of delivery of marijuana a crime which carries varying jail time depending on the amount of marijuana being delivered. So what have we learned? That both pot smokers and non-pot smokers are equally stupid. The foster father's criminal background apparently did not bar his home from the Texas Mentor Program's potential foster parent roster. Despite the background, KRXT wrote, the Department of Family and Protective Services said minor drug charges 10 years old or older do not disqualify potential foster parents. But of course, if you're a veteran, you can't own a gun. This latest revelation adds an additional layer of culpability to the program that was in charge of vetting the foster parents, the Texas Mentor Program, as well as the legislative body which originally determined that living with her biological parents posed serious safety concerns. Disgusts me. It also doesn't help that the mentor program standards are so low. According to the website, just about anyone can be a mentor. Alexandria died last week after being taken off life support at the Scott and White Children's Emergency Hospital in Temple. That's why I'm out here doing the correct views, people, because this kind of thing matters. Her foster mother, Cheryl Small, told police conflicting stories before admitting she accidentally dropped her while in the middle of shaking her thus causing blunt force trauma to the head. She faces murder charges and is being held on a $100,000 bond. Yeah, well maybe you don't shake your kid if you smoke some weed and take the edge off, but no, that's a sin. Alexandria's case should serve as a warning to parents who smoke marijuana that the state can use the nonviolent and relatively harmless recreational activity as an excuse to confiscate children, placing them in facilities usually run for profit. Exactly. It's about money, it's about conscription, it's about conformity. Just as Congress has exempted itself and its top aides from Obamacare, and just as lawmakers are being licensed, are issued license plates that allow them to outsmart traffic cameras and thus, thus avoid crimes, it goes on and talks about how the government, of course we all know, is so very corrupt. Sadly, it closes Alexandra, Alexandria is only one out of literally thousands of children who have had to suffer as a result of the CPS, Child Protective Services, system failing miserably. So what I'm going to do, breaks my heart to even look at this poor little girl, I'm going to go ahead and call this up on the screen. Here is the, uh, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award that is being sent to the wonderful people in Texas. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this up so that you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and call it up on my computer and read it to you. Guys, this, this is sad. I want to show you the dunce cap that uh, Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen, has made. Those would be marijuana leaves, and it looks like it's written and smeared in blood. Not making fun, I'm proving a point. And also, before anyone says, pointing a dunce cap at you, if, if anyone says that this is a threat or dangerous, I am not threatening Texas. I am giving them the shame that is due them. So when they see the little Grim Reaper in the dunce cap, he threatened us. No, I have not threatened you. 
The Nuns Cap of the Month award, I wrote, It takes a special kind of fascist to strong arm a child from a loving home based on a lifestyle judgment that are based on lifestyle judgments that are draconian to say the least. But you dunderheads at the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services have shown that it can still be seen. Not content with any lessons learned from the actions of government in regards to children as seen in the Hitler Youth, which I alluded to, you callous clowns captured a child from a loving home over a matter that was none of your business whatsoever, and this action resulted in the death of Alexandria Hill. While the law uses pot as an excuse to steal money from otherwise harmless and productive people, your actions went beyond the art of thievery, I wrote, and into the domain of death. It is for that reason that you win the Correct View's Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Her blood is on your hands. Given with intent to shame, not threaten, and proudly so from the Correct Views, to see your presentation, youtube.com slash the Correct Views. That's what that says, and I stand by every single word. CPS filthy scum. Human filth. You're listening to The Correct Views, Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to The Media Speaks, click on the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself, and do something to help the movement. At least do something to make sure that you don't get the Dunce Cap of the Month award.